Good morning, everybody, and welcome to week one of your April 30 for 30 fitness challenge. This video is gonna focus on your strength workout for this week. Remember, your goal is to complete this workout two to three times during the week on non-consecutive days. You can do your strength workout on the same day as you do a cardio workout, but you just don't wanna do two strength workouts two days in a row. Okay, I'm gonna briefly talk about the workout and how it's gonna be structured, and then I'll go through each exercise so that you are comfortable with what the exercise should look and feel like. At any time, if you have any questions, please email me or text me. Text is usually a little bit quicker for me to get back with you, um, and I will help you out in any way possible. All right, so this workout is broken into what I call four blocks. These are four sections of exercises. The intention is that we keep these exercises connected as much as possible. So for the first three blocks, the workout stays 30 seconds of each exercise three times in a row. So there's three exercises listed. You'll start with the first exercise and then go to the second and then to the third and then back to the top to repeat each exercise. You want a total of three rounds. Your goal is to not stop between these exercises. Um, so I suggest you take a timer, maybe a timer on your phone or a stopwatch you can set the timer for the total amount of time that you need, and every time you hit that 30 second mark, jump right into the next exercise, trying not to take a rest or a recovery. If you do need a rest or recovery, that's okay, but go ahead and stop your timer. You don't wanna lose 10, 15 seconds of the next exercise. Stop your timer, take a quick breath, grab a sip of water, and then get right into that next exercise. The only block that's different is block four. So block four, you'll notice you have 20 seconds of work followed by 10 seconds of what we call rest or recovery or transition time. So it gives you 10 seconds to kind of catch your breath and get to that next exercise. The goal of that block is to really get you out of breath. So you're working as hard as you possibly can for 20 seconds, catching your breath for 10. As hard as you can on the next exercise for 20, catching your breath for 10. Three rounds still on that block. Okay, questions, let me know. I'm gonna go right into our exercises. So the first exercise listed on block one is a narrow squat to a sumo squat. So there's multiple ways to do a squat. In all versions of squats, you have a couple of things that are uh, similar on each one. Number one is that you're always equal weight on both sides. If it's a squat and not a lunge, we shouldn't be stepping one foot in front of the other one. So when you go into a squat, you always wanna make sure that your weight is back in your heels. So whether it's a super wide sumo squat or a really narrow squat, you're always gonna sit your weight back into your heels so that your knees end up somewhere right around between your toes and your shoelaces. Chest nice and tall, abdominals pulled in tight. I like to take my arms out in front. It helps me to balance so that I can really sit back in my squat into my heels. Now, if you do a squat and in the middle of the squat, you think, can I wiggle my toes? And you cannot wiggle your toes, most likely you've got too much weight forward on those toes. So to rock back in those heels, you should be able to wiggle those toes, really feel the glutes get into action. So on a narrow squat to sumo squat, we're combining two different squats. Narrow means that my feet are within the level of my hips or the width of my hips. So this would be more of a normal squat for me, right in line with the hips. Narrow, I come in even closer. So now that my hips are out, my knees are in just a little bit. Sumo is the complete opposite. Sumo squat, I'm going super wide with my feet and then therefore wide with my knees. So on a narrow to sumo squat, you're gonna start with those feet nice and narrow and give me one nice big squat. You're gonna stand it back up and immediately step out wide into a sumo squat. So you see my knees, Go with my toes nice and wide in that sumo squat. From here, you're gonna push right back to the middle into your next narrow squat. And then you're gonna come up and step right wide into that next sumo squat. You wanna connect these as much as possible. In 30 seconds, you wanna get at least eight repetitions here. Narrow squat, sumo squat, narrow squat, sumo squat. Sit them as low as you can. Your goal is to get those hips to at least to the level of the knees, if not a little bit lower. All right, next exercise. From there, you're gonna drop immediately down into push-ups. This is our basic push-up. Hands you wanna make sure are underneath, I'm gonna go from sideways. Hands are underneath your shoulders at all times, so you don't let the hands out in front. Hips are in alignment with the rest of your body. 
So you really want to avoid the arch position and the pike hip up position. You gotta really tuck the pelvis under, squeeze the abs nice and tight, and keep everything going. Ultimately, you wanna stay on the feet, abs in nice and tight, as long as you can get at least uh, 90 degrees at the elbow. So if you, as long as you can get your chest to the level of your elbows, then you can stay on your feet. However, if in that nice, beautiful, straight body line, all you can get is about 45 degrees, then I want you to drop to your knees. But here's the thing, I don't want you to stay on your knees. So if I decide I need to use my knees, I'm gonna lower my knees as I go down, get that big range of motion, and as I push back up, I'm gonna pick the knees back up. This is gonna force you to really keep the abs nice and tight. Lower, drop the knees, pick them up as you push up. If you stay on your knees the whole time, you are killing the amount of core you can get from the exercise. You are also killing the hope of being able to do them ever on your feet, because when you drop your knees, it shifts your weight back and it changes your center of gravity on the push-up. So your upper body is not holding as much weight. So force the knees to stay up as long as you can, then drop the knees when you have to. Moving on, next exercise, you're just gonna flip over to what we call a tuck-in. So a tuck-in starts with everything tucked in together. So feet are off the ground, abs are in nice and tight, turn sideways, abs are in nice and tight, pelvis is tucked under, from here, I'm gonna reach everything out as far as I can, aiming to touch the middle of the back, but not the shoulder blades. So abs stay in tight. I reach the legs out nice and low, pressing that low back down, and then I lift back to the top. Reach it away, tap, lift back to the top. If you need to modify this one, either from low back pain or from hip flexor pain, you can either take one leg out or if you absolutely need to, you can keep a foot on the ground and try it from there first. All right, so that would make one round, all three exercises in a row, then you jump right back up to that narrow squat. Two more rounds, three. All right, then you transition to block two. So block two, exercises start up on the feet. We're gonna take what we call a curtsy lunge. So a curtsy lunge is a two-part lunge. Not only are we stepping backwards into a lunge, we're also stepping sideways. So starting from standing on my left leg, I'm gonna cross over behind with my right leg. And my goal is to get my right leg out to the side and backwards. So I'll show you from the front first. I'm gonna cross over, reaching it out to the side. So when I sit into my lunge, both knees bend and my hip presses out to the side. You will immediately feel that glute medius, the outside of that glute and hip, have to kick in to get you back to the top. And then we just switch legs. Other leg crosses over, back and to the side. Both knees bend, back to the top. So from the side, you really got to make sure that you do step back. If you only step sideways, your knees have nowhere to bend. So you end up just kind of dropping the chest forward. So really make sure that you step sideways and backwards so that both knees get a nice big bend. You can really feel a difference. If you don't step back far enough, your feet are really kind of squished together and the knees get stuck. So nice big step over and back. This one should really fire up the outside of the glutes. You should feel this one tomorrow. Next exercise, you're back down to the ground for a power pipe into an ever step. So two part move. Your power pike starts in a plank position. You are gonna drive backwards trying to push your heels into the floor and open your shoulders as much as you can. Then as you come forward, one leg is gonna pick up, go as close to your hand as you can, and you're gonna drop your hip into that uh, runner's lunge position. So this should feel like a little bit of a stretch. Then as soon as you're ready, which should be pretty quickly, you're gonna pick that foot back up Drive back to pike and switch legs. Ultimately, you wanna move these quickly. So it's pike, Everest, pike, Everest. Moving really fast through the shoulders and the core. Now, if you wanna add a little bit of challenge to this one, you can pick up the inside hand. Instead of an Everest step, make it a tiger step. So when I step forward, 
my inside hand or same leg side hand pops up in the air and then I go back to that pike and then I pop that next hand up. Just going to add a little bit of challenge. Most of the challenge is going to come into your heart rate. It's going to take that heart rate up a little bit more. Next exercise is our L sit up. So feet are extended out in front. Your starting position, you should feel like an L. So arms are up by the ears, chest pressed forward, abs tight. We're going to lower all the way back down behind, abs in tight. As soon as you get there, you are sitting back up to your L, tapping your feet right back up to that L. Abs in tight, roll the hips under, quick back to the top, and reach for the feet. All right, guys, moving on to block three. Now we're going to take our lunge into a lateral position. So we've squatted narrow and wide. We've curtsied side to side. Now we're going to lateral lunge side to side. So on your lateral lunge, because it's a lunge, you know that only one leg is going to bend. So if both knees bend, then it becomes a uh, squat on this exercise. So only one leg bends. The leg bending is your stepping leg. So I'm going to step out to the side. As soon as I land, that leg bends and absorbs into the floor. Hips push back. And the stationary leg gets a nice stretch. And then I'm going to power off this outside leg all the way back to center and then switch legs. So we'll alternate legs on this one. I'm going to show you from the side. As you step sideways, it bends as you land to absorb your weight. Hips go back, chest stays up tall, and then power off that leg all the way back to center. So alternate legs, side to side. Then we're going to take what we call a walkout. So walkout, if you have a mat, it's going to start from the end of your mat. Nice big standing position. This one you're going to have to move as quickly as possible because it's a long exercise. So if you can get four or five in in 30 seconds, you're moving pretty quickly. We're going to take a toe touch. So you're going to reach down and touch those toes. Keeping the knees as straight as you can, you're going to walk out to a plank. From here, we're going to take a quick push up. If you need your knees, same as earlier, drop to those knees and pick them back up. And then we're going to walk back, keeping those knees as straight as you can, and reach for the sky. So again, it's toe touch, quick hands out, push up when you get there, quick hands back, and a nice big reach. We're going to finish this one with bicycles. So on your back, abs in nice and tight. Now when I, you do these bicycles, I don't want you to think, how many can I do in 30 seconds? I want you to think, how perfect can they be in the 30 seconds? So instead of just our close body alternating, we're going to really go for reaching the straight leg as far as possible and as low to the ground as you can and really opening your chest across toward the ceiling and then switch and switch and switch. If you can get 30 in this 30 seconds, you're moving too fast. I want you to slow down and focus on really crossing the body and engaging those obliques. Okay, that's block three. Final block. This is the block where we're really going to kick that heart rate up and push our pace a little bit. Exercise number one is our basic jumping jack. Nothing too crazy. Everything starts together. Everything goes all the way out. Hands come together at the top and everything all the way back in. It is really imperative that you think about a jumping jack like a full motion every time. The arms should be tight. You are lifting the body and you are pulling it back in. The more you can engage every muscle in your body, the more you're going to get out of this one. So you have 30 seconds. As quick as you can, pump out those jumping jacks. Exercise number two, sprawls. So a sprawl is basically a burpee if you've had those in a workout or way back in grade school PE, which was an awful time to do a burpee, without all of the extra stuff. So a sprawl, you're gonna start with your feet about hip width. We're gonna to drop to a squat, hands onto the floor. From here, we're gonna hop the feet out backwards into a nice strong plank. So I'm gonna jump it out. Feet go backwards, abs really tight, strong plank. Feet come all the way back in, drop those heels, and stand it back up. So no jump, no push-up. Squat, 
plank, squat, and stand. Squat, plank, squat, and stand. As many as you can, 30 seconds, uh, 20 seconds, sorry. Then you get 10 seconds to get into your skaters. These are our speed skaters. These we're gonna stay up on our feet, a lot like jumping jacks in that we're looking to really move the low body nice and fast. But with this one, we're looking to get up in the air a little bit too. So starting from one side, my goal is to leap up and over to land on the opposite leg. So my left leg is gonna go up and over. The back leg is just gonna tap the floor behind. As soon as I land, I'm up and over, up and over, up and over. What you do with your back leg, not incredibly important. Some people like to really cross it back. Some people like to just tap it right behind. Does not matter, do what is comfortable for you. However, make sure that the leg you land on stays forward. You don't want this knee turning, either inside or rotating outside, or you're gonna put extra strain on the, the uh, inner and outside ligaments of the knee. We don't wanna do that. So keep everything facing forward, nice and big. 20 seconds, push it hard. Then you'll have 10 seconds to catch your breath right into those jumping jacks. This last block should feel the most challenging for breathing. When you go through it, the 20 seconds, when you get to the end of that 20, you should feel really gassed. 10 seconds is not enough to fully recover. 10 seconds is enough to kind of convince yourself that you have to be ready to go again, but not fully recover. So by the time you finish those three rounds, you should be pretty done. All right, guys. Remember, if you have any questions on exercises, please let me know. Text me, email me, send me a video, email or text on what you're doing if you're not sure if it's right. I will very happily get back with you quickly. I can even FaceTime you and fix anything that needs correcting. Um, that being said, please make sure you do some kind of warm up to start the workout. What, if you're short on time and you've got three to five minutes to just kind of walk it around the house, jump it around, shake the arms out, move the body, just get the blood pumping, that's fine. If you have a little bit more time than that, um, I have a recorded warm up on your sheet as well as a recorded cool down that I've done with uh, previously. So please just look, uh, press play and go through and follow along for a full warm up and a full cool down. All right, guys, I wish you all the success this week. I will be checking in at the end of this week. If this workout is too easy, perfectly fine. Please be honest with me. I will happily make it more challenging for you. If it's a little bit too hard, if I push you a little too far and you are super sore, please let me know because I definitely want to scale it back. I want to give you the uh, advantage of starting to be, build a healthy habit and the consistency of exercise without overdoing it in the beginning. So please, please be in contact and be very honest with me. All right, guys, I wish you all the best. I hope you have a fantastic week and I look forward to your feedback. Let's do it, get after it.